Well, everybody hates to hear that C word, the cancer word. It certainly is a, a terrifying description. Nobody wants to ever hear it, Dr. Templeman, but I know that you believe that the mangosteen can really help in that direction, certainly with tumors. Well, in fact, what I wrote in the mangosteen, the X factor, was that it was an anti-tumor effect. And here again, we have to go back to the idea that we're working in petri dishes with cultures of human cancer cells. So taking human cancer cells from breast, from lung, from liver, uh, leukemia, which is of course a blood type of cancer, and I know that there is a research project going on right now with ovarian cancer. Using these cancer cultures, we have incubated them with the xanthones from the mangosteen, and in no instance has there ever been a failure. In other words, the mangosteen has either killed or it has inhibited the growth of all of the cancer cells to which it has been exposed. And in fact, in Taiwan, at the university uh, that uh, studies Chinese medicine and compares it to Occidental medicine, there was a comparison done with regard to stomach cancer, breast cancer, and primary liver cancer. And they compared one of the xanthones from the mangosteen, a substance called Garcinone E to six cancer chemotherapy drugs which are standardly used today and it outperformed five of them. Now that may not impress a lot of people because it's in a petri dish but I'll, I'll tell you it impressed me and I think it impressed the cancer cells. So I, I really do believe that there is reason to be optimistic about this in the use of uh, cancer therapy. However, I would never recommend that anyone stop their standard cancer therapy, whether they're uh, receiving chemotherapy or whether they're having radiation or any other type of cancer therapy, in favor of this. I would suggest that it be added to it and that when some uh, outcome comes, who cares who got the credit? But I have seen remarkable things happen with regard to cancer when folks have used the mangosteen as well as everything else at their disposal. Doctor, I think you have everybody's attention now. Yeah, you mentioned that it was that it was a scary word, the C word, the cancer word. I believe the reason why it's so scary is that you could ask any physician and find an oncologist that's with you for a living and ask, what is the cure to cancer? There is none. And there is none. And I know oncologists do the best job they can with, with the drugs that they have, but there is still to this day no cure for cancer and there is and there is comparing the number of mortality, the mortality the rate. The percentage mortality. Yeah, percentage mortality rate 30 years ago to 2004, it's about the same. And we're talking about the four big killers. We're talking about colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, and breast cancer. And yet you look at something like an herb, what else can there be in nature that can help? And that's why I believe that even though these are done in a petri dish, these studies that Dr. Templeman mentioned have all come out in the past couple of years, published in peer-reviewed journals, and that there, is some, there are anti-tumor properties to this. And uh, there's still a lot of study to be done. There's a lot of promise in this fruit. You certainly have a lot of people's attention right now.